You are so important to God that on the first day of the church, God gave you a job description. God says you are to do two things. You're supposed to be what? Prophet. Nice. And secondly, you're supposed to? Ah, oh, lovely. You're supposed to have vision. You're supposed to show us what it is that God wants us to see in the world. So I invite you to pray with me, please. Let's pray together. So, O oh God, you are the one who calls us to be your prophets. You are the one who calls us to be your visionaries. We give you thanks for your call to us this day and every day of our lives. We thank you that your call is not dependent upon us, not dependent upon our even recognizing or hearing your call. Your call comes from you, and you are a God who is persistent, relentless, we heard, in pursuing us and loving us no matter what. So help us to be attentive to you, O God, so that we might worship you and glorify you, for you alone are worthy, you who are the maker of the universe, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. So, um, a conversation. So my job is to do theological reflection with you. I did it last night and had a conversation with you. Conversation throughout the day, I'm really grateful for that, and so I want to continue. Um, what, what I want to think about is, is I kept on hearing throughout last night and today um, these, uh, this theme that's emerging, and it sort of came from our very first worship service together when we heard about the creation story. So if you would do me a favor and if you would look uh, at the text and let's see uh, what the text says. Maybe we're not going to see what the text says. I think I'm, oh, there we go. Um, out loud with me, please. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have this text that we heard on the first time we gathered for worship, and it's about the creation story. What I thought about was throughout last night and today was, then God said. The whole idea is that God is so powerful, God speaks creation into being. Uh, in the sermon that the Reverend Simon Lesueur preached to us on the first night, he said, God created and then invited us to be participants in that creation. God's creative activity seems to be about God's voice. When God speaks, whole planets come into being. Creation comes into being. God is so powerful, so amazing. It's by God's voice. That phrase, then God said, appears 10 times in the first chapter of Genesis. 10 times, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and these things are created. The whole world is created. So God's voice is so important. So what that occurred to me was our conversations about voice and silence. I kept on thinking about the sermon last night from the Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson and what Aiden said to us this morning. And I thought about, we kept on hearing the theme of voice and silence. Remember last night, the Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson preached to us and she said, we have a choice. We can show up and be part of the solution, or we can be so afraid, we can be silent and be part of the problem. I think what she was raising for us is extremely powerful and needed in this day. We actually just sang it together in our theme song, you have a choice. You can use the voice that God has given you when God created you, spoke you into being, or you can choose to be silent. You can choose to be part of the problem. You and I make those choices every single day. When we encounter meanness and bullying and persons who are doing evil and hating on other people, we have a choice. We can be part of the solution, we can speak up, or we can be silent and part of the problem. And then this morning, in the conversation that we had with Aiden, which was remarkable in and of itself, um, Aiden, oh hey, by the way, so, so general counsel happens how, every what, how many years? 
three years, huh? And at general council, there's another moderator elected. So our moderator, her term will finish with this next general council, right? Yes. And there's another moderator who will be elected for the church. Is that right? Yes. Now, is there, is there by any chance in your rules a prohibition about how old a person has to be to be the moderator of the United Church of Canada? Is there? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you have to be a certain age to be moderator? Oh, really? Huh. Well, I'll be darned. I was actually talking to the general secretary this afternoon, the general secretary, Nora, over there, and Nora Sanders was saying to me, Roger, the way Aiden described the structure of the church in three and a half minutes, there are pastors who couldn't do that. Yes. And not, not that I'm going to plan out your life for you, Aiden, but I'm going to. So, <laughs> after you serve as the youngest moderator, the 43rd moderator in the United Church of Canada, is there an age prohibition about Prime Minister of Canada? Is there? I mean, do you have to be a certain... I don't, I don't know. So, so you know, Aiden, we can work this out. I mean... <laughs> You're studying politics and religion and French. I mean, this is God's calling upon your life. <laughs> so anyway, Aiden also talked about this morning, and he said, the idea of a Christian church remaining silent in injustice is a contradictory statement. The idea of a Christian church remaining silent in injustice is a contradictory statement. And then he also said, how can we call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ if we remain silent in a world so deeply riddled with evil? There's great wisdom there, both from the Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson and from the future moderator and prime minister. <laughs> By the grace of God, that you and I, as the Church of Jesus Christ, cannot remain silent. Otherwise, we give away any sense of our authority to speak truth into the lives of children and young people and women and men in this world and around the entire world. So part of what I'm convinced about in these days is that there are others who've spoken these same kinds of words. In his letter from a Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King Jr. said, history will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. Karen and Aiden and others are giving witness to the same thoughts that MLK Jr. had. We and we cannot remain silent. That's not what God calls us to do. That's not what it means to be followers of Jesus in these days. So in the midst of evil, we are the united church, Aiden said. We have always stood together and we will always stand together. When one of us is hurting, all of us are hurting. Our generation does not have the luxury of silence. We must speak boldly. When one of us is hurting, all of us is hurting. We don't have the luxury of silence. You don't. Your generation. I do have to say, Aiden, I think Airbud appeared before you were born. <laughs> the whole idea is, friends, you have a calling upon you to be our prophets and our visionaries. Now, on Wednesday afternoon, when the moderator of the church spoke to us, the right Reverend Jordan Cantwell, she answered a lovely question. There was a great question that, that was given to her, and I thought she answered it brilliantly. The questioner asked, well, how, how do we spread the gospel? How do, we, how do we help people know about Jesus Christ? And Jordan's brilliant answer, do you recall? She said, I think you have to act first. 
Don't, don't worry about words. Act first. Lead with your actions. There's an aphorism, actions speak louder. There's truth to that. So if you're wondering how you give witness to your faith in Jesus, you do something about it. So part of this speaking boldly is acting. If you aren't sure that you have the right words to say, or if you're doubtful that you are eloquent enough to say the right things, then just do something. Show love in some wonderful way. And then when people ask you, and they will, Jordan said this, when people ask you, excuse me, I saw you do that, why did you do that? Then you get to have conversation. Simon talked about this as well. Then you get to have follow-up conversation. I think part of speaking boldly is language. Shanna and Adam both have said language matters. That's true. But speaking boldly is also letting your life speak. Taking the courage to show up even in the midst of evil. So I'm mindful of what happened in Barcelona. And it was two years ago that the bombing took place in Paris. And as a result of that, this conversation took place. Tu comprends ce qui s'est passé Tu comprends pourquoi ces gens ils ont fait ça Oui, parce qu'ils sont très 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 méchants. Les méchants, c'est pas très gentil les méchants. Et il faut faire vraiment attention parce qu'il faut, il faut changer de maison. Mais non, t'inquiète pas. On n'a pas besoin de changer de maison. C'est la France notre maison. Mais il y a des méchants, papa. Oui, mais il y a des méchants partout. Il y a des méchants partout. Ils ont les pistolets, ils peuvent nous tirer dessus parce qu'ils sont très très méchants, papa. C'est pas grave, ils ont des pistolets, nous on a des fleurs. Bah les fleurs ça fait rien, c'est pour, c'est pour, c'est pour... Euh... Mais si regarde, tu vois tout le monde pose des fleurs. Oui. C'est pour combattre les pistolets. C'est pour, c'est pour protéger. Voilà. Et les bougies aussi. C'est pour ne pas oublier les gens qui, se, qui sont partis. Hein. Euh... C'est pour nous protéger les fleurs et les bougies. Ça va mieux du coup Oui, ça va mieux. Now, on the face of it, it sounds completely absurd. Really. That flowers and candles can stand up against guns. But that's part of what it means to speak boldly that Aiden asked us to do. Flowers and candles are more powerful than guns because each flower, each candle represents one person's voice. It represents one person who is standing in opposition to evil. Given what happened last weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia, this is what happened on Wednesday night. There were five, over 5,000 persons who stood on the University of Virginia's campus. Candles and flowers against hate. This is what happened nine hours ago in Barcelona candles and flowers against evil. On the face of it, it sounds absurd. But you don't have the luxury of silence. None of us do. We must speak boldly. Friends, the church is desperate for your voice. We need your beautiful voice and your courage. So I'm asking you, use your voice. 
Just use your voice. Do something. Just show us what it means to be the church of Jesus Christ in this day and in this age. For God's sake. Literally. And for the sake of the church.